So Hiromashima's newest manga series, Dead Rock, has officially released its first chapter, and it is a monthly manga. Meaning this is Mashima's third ongoing manga series that he's doing at the exact same time, alongside writing and drawing Eden Zero Weekly, writing storyboarding Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest on a bi-weekly basis, and now he's writing and drawing Dead Rock on a monthly basis. And Dead Rock is a series that is confirmed to be a short manga series. How long that's gonna be, I have no clue, but it's monthly, so the chapters are going to be long, and I give it at max maybe 80 chapters. I doubt, I doubt if it's going to be short, it won't reach 100 chapters, but we'll see what happens. However, what I wanted to go over is the fact that within this one single chapter of Dead Rock, we got a surprisingly solid sense of world building for the, the, the Demon Realm and the world in general that Mashima created for Dead Rock, and I'll get into all that in a second, as it's fairly interesting. But before we get into everything, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make on this channel. Dead Rock is gonna try and be a new series on the channel since it is monthly, but chapter two seemingly isn't gonna come out till September because I believe the magazine it's in is gonna be on break. So I'm doing these Dead Rock videos in place of a chapter review, how many I'm gonna do, I still have no clue at the point of me recording this video, but look forward to some more Dead Rock content as this series already has a lot of potential from its first chapter alone. So with all that out of the way, let's get right into the video. So what do I mean by Dead Rock has some pretty solid world building? Well, for starters, aside from the whole Demon Academy thing, we get a couple of things explained to us in this chapter and laid the foundation for what we can expect for this series. Now let's start with the obvious one, and that is the different layers to the Demon Realm. In the beginning of the chapter, we encounter someone who's said to be from the 27th layer, and further on, we get to hear about more characters that have done specific things like freezing a town like Hein who was in the 306 layer and Freyr who was in the 296 layer burning down multiple buildings and in this section of the story we see that this key piece of information is that the lower the level the lower the realm that you're in in these layers the more powerful and more dangerous the demons in the areas are and Dead Rock is in the 666th layer of the Demon Realm. Now, whether or not there's any more layers in the Demon Realm from here is still to be explained, but it would make sense if this was the lowest layer, as you do have the Lord, the ruler of, of this Demon Realm, and the principal of Dead Rock, simply named God. And just the idea that we already have like a power hierarchy system for the different levels of the demon realm is already well enough and good alone for a first chapter. But Mashima goes a bit more into that as aside from the whole layer aspect, we learn thanks to Maxwell's rant when Yakuto talks about the human realm and if humans are treated well, we know for a certain fact that there are three separate realms in this world that Dead Rock presides in. And aside from that, we also hear that graduates from Dead Rock are given access to the human realm to rule over certain sections from what we can tell. As the human realm is very vast like the demon realm as it is confirmed by Maxwell in his explanation and it's the fact that there's only one human realm not multiple that different demons can rule over giving us a limit of these realms. So we have the demon realm confirmed obviously since that's the main area that the story takes place in and we have the human realm which is the goal of those wanting to graduate from dead rock to become a demon king and rule over essentially their own section of it basically just world domination in a sense to be a true demon king but it was mentioned of a third and based off of how this series is being built up as we can assume the third realm most likely might be a heavenly realm or an angelic realm as when you're gonna have demons you're gonna have to have angels in heaven and hell and all that parallel stuff so it kind of goes without saying, unless Mashima chooses to throw a curveball and make it something else. Or hell, he might even add a fourth or even a fifth realm if he really felt like it to throw us some sort of narrative curveball, curveball or plot twist. But we already got confirmation of three realms. We know the human realm, because that's where we gotta go to, and we're in Dead Rock, which is in the Demon Realm, and there is a third, previously unknown realm, 
which we can all basically just assume is the heavenly realm is what we're going to call it giving us an idea of the specific areas that we'll most likely be able to see in dead rock in this very limited series now beyond the realms and the layers we also have confirmation that at for the very least in our main cast of seven characters in class f we have the idea of roots and within class f where the main cast of seven characters resides in we know what their roots are roots essentially are the basically a descendant line or a relation to a particular deity or mythological creature from different mythologies legends and such and with all of these different characters we can essentially dig into each one of them to think of their inspirations we know what their roots are and we can think about what their abilities could potentially be how their characters could progress if Mashima follows everything to a specific level of creative freedom or more tightly we got Hein who is the friend rare roots we have Raisin, who is Orochi, which I can assume is Yamato no Orochi from Japanese mythology. We have Freyr, who is Ifrit. We got Chako, who is uh, Yatagarasu. Hani, who is descendant from the Th Thor God of Thunder. Mikoto, who is a Lich descendant. And Yakuto, who is a Black Dragon descendant, is where his roots come from. And the idea of roots is actually a really cool way to give us an idea of what characters can do, how strong they can become, as I previously mentioned, as with so many different mythologies and legends across the globe, and with the idea of these roots being all true within this world of Dead Rock, we can literally just assume that the world, the human realm, is similar to our own with these different deity mythological roots originating in the human realm or even the heavenly realm or demon realm, giving us more depth to the literal world if all these different things inhabit the exact same universe and have literal like descendants or connections in different demons or characters in these different realms which honestly adds more color to it and it makes me very excited because seemingly every character or the majority of the characters at least in dead rock in the demon realm have roots pertaining to different mythological creatures or even just creatures in general from all these different myths and legends or potentially just original demons without any superficial roots which gets all the theory juices flowing and just makes potential matchups between characters that we could eventually see all the more interesting and speaking of roots the last bit i want to talk about in terms of the world building involves yakuto and his roots as a black dragon now we all know what we saw in the first chapter yakuto has a dragon arm which when he uses his black dragon attack, we get an image of Acnologia from Fairy Tale. There's a lot of implications which can be their own videos in and of themselves, so I'm not going to get too far into it. But we can assume he could have some sort of relation to Acnologia, and this could potentially be in a similar world to Fairy Tale. Or maybe this is just Mashima just giving a really big reference to one of the big bads that he had in one of his biggest series, if not the most popular series he's had in years since Rave Master, and it's just a nice nod to his fans as he tends to do with every one of his series after Rave Master. But what I want to get into is the dragon roots that Yakuto seemingly comes from, and that is with different pieces of dialogue, it stated that the dragons were supposedly extinct, and people were shocked to find out about the fact that he is a dragon, and that he is a quote-unquote survivor. Given this pieces of dialogue, we can assume that some catastrophic event happened to the dragons, either in the demon realm, or the human realm, or any, of the, or any realm in general, leaving basically no sign of any roots, and Yakuto seems to be the only sole survivor from what we could tell. Meaning, either an extinction event happened where they all died out, or there was potentially an extermination. And as we saw with Yakuto's two-faced personality, and his main goal of wanting to kill the character of God in this world, we could assume the latter of an actual extermination of the dragons, and maybe this is a whole big thing of revenge, tied with him wanting to become a demon king to go to the human realm. A bit of a stretch, but that's what I could come up with from what we have in just this one single chapter. But the idea of the dragons being extinct adds more layers to the world building as the dragons did supposedly exist, and the second, you know, one of the characters, the Taurus Bull, from the 27th layer found out that Yakuto was a dragon and the fact that Yakuto has kept his dragon powers a secret saying that he didn't want to reveal them until he entered Dead, Dead Rock 
shows that this is a big thing that should not be overlooked. And also, the guy shat his bricks the second he found out that Yakuto has dragon roots, showcasing that these dragons were nothing to scoff at and that they were very powerful. So, there's a lot of implications from just the dialogue of the idea of the dragons being extinct in general. One thing that is shared from Fairy Tale is the importance of dragons and how strong they, could, they can actually be. So, that's another thing I honestly really do enjoy. But that's essentially all of the world building aspects that we get from Dead Rock in just a single chapter. The idea of different layers in the level of strength the lower you are. The three separate realms, the idea that there's only one human realm and the demons that graduate Dead Rock essentially rule over different sections of it. The idea of roots and how every single character, at least in the main cast and some other characters that we'll eventually see, will have roots tying back to mythological creatures or gods that give us an idea of their powers and abilities and potentially what they could do in the future, and everything involving Yakuto with his dragon roots based off of the dialogue and the reactions to people as dragon roots are supposedly rare or they're supposed to be extinct. But yeah, that's basically all I can get in terms of the world building. Not many series do very solid world building in just a single chapter, but that is kind of a plus to monthly manga as they could have first chapters up to 80 pages, which is what Dead Rock was, which allowed Mashima to just stuff it with a good amount of lore and world building to get us invested and intrigued in this world while leaving things open for much more for us to figure out and look forward to in the future of the story. But yeah, what did you guys think? Did you agree with the things that I stated in this video about being good at world building and making it relatively solid? Was there anything that I miss in this particular section of the story in terms of world building or character building? Let me know in the comment section down below along with what do you think is going to happen in Dead Rock next and who is your favorite character? I. While I like Yakuto already because he's the main character, I am more prone to Freyr and Mikoto for obvious reasons. So let me know, and if you haven't already, like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make on this channel. Look forward to more Dead Rock content before Chapter 2 comes out, as I do want to make more content on the series to help build up the fan base as well on YouTube so that more people can know about this brand new series. And with all that said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you all have an awesome day.